Good evening and welcome back to Pipe and Tobacco Talk Podcast. It's episode 45 and we're already off to a rocky start. Tim, read us the mbsdpipes.com Prop 69 warning. Warning, this podcast will expose the list to offensive, insensitive, off-putting, and otherwise socially unacceptable content. Note the state of California to cause cancer to avoid injuries. Sponsors of this podcast <laughs> suggest it's not a cult. It's an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So we are we're doing a contest tonight. And, and Tim and I are wound up. We're giving away this beautiful Mersham Pipes from MBSD. Brand new, absolutely gorgeous, bent Rhodesian, spectacular pipe. And we ask you to make us laugh. Um, there's, no, there's, and, no, uh, there's, no, there's no eye in brain damage. And... We're gonna start off. We're gonna we're gonna get right into the contest. Uh, there's some new tobacco blends. We're gonna talk about pipes, but we're gonna get right into the contest rolling. And my son, who said, "You know, can I send you something? I don't want to really want to be in the contest." And I said, "Yeah, I sure." Just read another one. I just read another. One. I, I got a quick and, look at this thing. <laughs> we started. So he sent me this video from Matt Rose. And it's the Inspirobot AI, and it it fed motivational posters in and said, AI, come up with motivational posters. And this is yellow, lead better, mangled lyrics. <laughs> Hysterical. And so I, I wrote some of them down. <laughs> And and send some to Tim. So we're going to start with my son, Smokey McBong Waters, uh, in Spirobot. He is not participating in the con in the contest, but just wanted to share some of these because they're absolutely hysterical. So Tim, t take us out. Okay. So the first motivational quote is, "Love is just a flying pig going to a funeral." <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, oh. There you go. Uh, I I like <laughs> it. It's not a cult. It's an opportunity. Uh, I just love hey. that one. <laughs> so, these things are so freaking mm. stupid. <laughs> Men are coming to get you. There was one like fingers playing a piano. <laughs> Let's yep. see. Yeah. It says there's a picture of a guy. He's got a, a respirator on. He's holding a can of something. And he's got a rubber suit on. It says, look for the meaning in small things and fake your own death. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. All right. Here's, here's one. Inter inter introduce yourself. As a war criminal. <laughs> there is no I in brain damage. <laughs> right. <laughs> parents become parents because of horniness. <laughs> oh, when, when did you decide to have kids, Mom and Dad? Well, you know, Mom... <laughs> Bodies are just ejaculations <laughs> dying. <laughs> you could choose to not quit heroin. Right. Participating in society is like medieval torture. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're the smartest person in the dialogue, perhaps you're imagining the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god oh man yeah mm -hmm. uh an, another one of Let's my see. favorites is shrinking shrinking a human head to a third of its size is hard to do even if you understand life <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this is these are ai generated <laughs> yeah, everything is fascinating to an idiot 
And then there's, there's one. It says, eat bats, live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two things you need in order to ignore reality is yoga and a fiddle. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this this one makes no sense. You you're powerful, but not as powerful as a regret. A baguette. Oh, is that right? Not okay. A, yeah, a baguette. Not yeah. a regret. Not a, a regret. Baguette. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Rule number two: yell into a bucket before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yep. Rule three, stand up straight like a model when meeting someone you would like to have intercourse with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Be the reason why a politician has a mental breakdown in a public restroom. <laughs> oh. God. Oh. Man, these things are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're interesting in the same way a bomb is interesting. <laughs> You're as arousing as sliced bread. <laughs> and then this, I like this one. It says, Canada is a hoax. <laughs> yep. They also did the horoscopes. So for you astrology fans, right. here's what AI thinks of your astrology sign. Cancer, responsible, fascinating, below average penis size. Right. Leo, Leo, amazing, fuckable, has no friends. Gemini, great sense of humor, generous, murderer. Sagittarius, just plain, just plain dumb. Yeah. Scorpio, strong, empathetic. Loves cocaine. <laughs> Pisces. Possibly a werewolf. <laughs> Aries. Criminally insane. <laughs> Virgo's gnome. <laughs> Just gnome. Gnome. <laughs> Capricorn. Always weird. <laughs> Libra, today you're going to sh... <laughs> 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 Libra, today you're going to shit yourself. <laughs> T Taurus, pussy grabbing communicator, pussy grabbing role model, pussy grabbing friend. <laughs> Aquarius, fucking asshole. <laughs> oh. <It's what laughs> Getting stabbed is very demotivating. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, for yeah. God's sake. <laughs> yeah, so those were those were pretty good. So if if you get a chance, it's in Spiralbot on Matt Rose's YouTube channel. And my son submitted we should put that. The, put a link, put a link I'll, in I'll the, put a link in it uh, description. when we yeah. set up the video. Did you All just right. say this one? Urinating urinating on an electric <laughs> fence is fun. <laughs> For everybody except, except those involved. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yep. Be the reason why a politician has a mental breakdown in a public restroom. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, here's one for the day. Hum during funerals. <laughs> so how AI came up with this stuff. It's just. You know, artificial intelligence is just that artificial <laughs> and and intelligence. Here's here's what <laughs> you are a fuck monkey. <laughs> I right, start again. Try one more time. All right. <laughs> you are a fuck monkey and belong in a dungeon. <laughs> <sighs> That's right, kids. That's why we do the warning. <laughs> so now we get into actual submissions for the contest. And the first one is from Brandon Zamorano. What do cigarettes and oral, t oral sex have in common? 
the flavor gets stronger the closer you get to the butt. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. I'm going to mark that one. (laughs) We're going to put a check mark next to that one, Brandon. That was a winner. (laughs) Chad Brinkman, a couple of things. Two, here's my entry to make you laugh. Okay. A penis has a sad life. His hair is a mess. His family is nuts. His neighbor is an asshole. His best friend's a pussy. And his odor beats him. <laughs> uh, <all laughs> right. I'm emo- I'm emotionally constipated. I haven't given a shit for years. <laughs> That's good. There we go. That moment when your streak is on oh, I'm sorry, that moment when your steak is on the grill and you can already feel your mouth watering. Do vegans feel the same when mowing the lawn? <laughs> 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 I gotta mark that one. That's a good one. <laughs> that was a good one too. Yeah, I like that one. Vegan is derived from the Hindu word for bad hunter. <laughs> what do you call a, a vegan with diarrhea? A salad shooter. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> these are all from Chad. All these are from Holy Chad. God. He just he was on a roll. Jeez, jeez. Um, what is the toughest part about being a vegan? Apparently keeping it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you oh, good, good and well. <laughs> We're going to get an angry email from Alan. <sighs> they just can't keep it. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, I made a graph of all the past, all of my past relationships. It has an X axis and a Y axis. W H Y. <laughs> and X is EX. Fun, yeah. Yep. Fun fact: Your shadow is a confirmation that light has traveled nearly ninety-three million miles unobstructed, only to be deprived of reaching the ground in the final few feet, thanks to you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here, you go ahead. You do some. <laughs> okay. Breaking news. A man was admitted to the hospital today with 25 plastic horses inserted into his rectum. Doctors described his condition as stable. (laughs) (laughs) The weirdest summer job I've ever had was cleaning the monkey cages at at the zoo. That shit was bananas. I've done some terrible <laughs> I've done some terrible things for money, like getting up early to go to work. Right. One, One thing, thing I, I can't, can't deal with is a deck of cards glued together. Mm-hmm. No, no, that was, that was, that was uh, a cheap uh, shot. Yeah, cheap shot. Yeah. yeah. But okay. Uh the sky was looming ominous, so I asked Siri, Surely it's not going to rain today. And she replied, Yes, it is, and don't call me Shirley. That's when I realized my phone was in airplane mode. The movie Airplane. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important now. Hey, son, do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> Ooh, Scraps is a boy dog. <laughs> Oh, before I die, I want to eat a, eat a whole bag of unpopped popcorn. That should make my cremation a little more interesting. <laughs> An Irish priest is driving along a country road when the police pull him over. They smell alcohol in the priest's breath. Have you been drinking? Just water, says the priest. The cop replies, then why do I smell wine? The priest says, good Lord, he's done it again. <laughs> Moderate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tripped over my my wife's bra. It was a booby trap. (laughs) Today, I learned that if you you turn a canoe over, you can wear it as a hat because it's capsized. (sighs) Reaching for it there, Chad. (laughs) 
All right. Uh, even though this was read previously, it's still a banger. Do you know that a piranha can devour a small child down to the bone in less than 30 seconds? Anyway, I lost my job at the aquarium today. <laughs> That's still a good one. That's still a good one. <laughs> Something that happened in my family this week. We are a theater family. My wife is an actor. I'm a director designer. And my seven-year-old has the bug as well. He loves the musical Hamilton. The first line in Hamilton is, how does a bastard orphan son of a whore? <laughs> We've talked to him about grown-up words, etc. He doesn't use them yet, but is aware of them. Some friends who are not theater folk took him home uh, the other night. He asked them to play the soundtrack on the drive. Needless to say, when they dropped him off, the mother looked at the at my wife and said, well, your son taught my children what a whore is tonight. I'm not sure whether to be proud, embarrassed, or what to feel necessarily, but I absolutely busted out belly laughing when I heard the news. Sounds like a true story. So we'll let it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, seven-year-old son, for teaching all the other kids what a whore is. <laughs> I, hate spell I hate spelling errors. To mix up two letters and your whole email is urined. Okay. To mix up TWO letters mm -hmm. and your whole email is U R I N E D, urined. It's funny. There you go. Okay. So I've got one from our friend, our mutual friend Elon from Israel. An old Jew is taking a walk and sees a lamp. He picks it up, he picks up the lamp and rubs it. A genie pops out. The genie says, I'll grant you one wish. The old Jew reaches into his pocket and takes out a crumpled map and says, You see this area? This is called the Middle East. There's but nothing but war and bloodshed for centuries. Can you do something? The genie goes, Even with my power, I can't do anything about that area. Can I grant you another wish? So he says, the Jewish guy says, I've been married for 40 years, and my wife has never given me a blowjob. Could you get her to do that for me, please, just once? The genie looks at the Jewish man and goes, can I take a look at the map again? <laughs> Good one, Elon. Yeah. I also got a, a version of it uh, on on Tuesday when I posted it, but the person didn't want to be entered into the contest. And it's the same joke set up. A okay. man is walking along the beach uh, just after his wife's funeral, and God appears before him and says, You've been a good man your whole life, and because of all the goodness you've done in your life and, and what you've had to go through, I'm here to grant grant you one wish. And he says, well, Lord, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm afraid to fly. So could you build a bridge from California to Hawaii so I can drive it over? And the Lord looks down at him, shaking his head, and says, just the engineering. There, there, there are no engineers on the earth that could design this bridge to have it work it's just impossible what's your second wish and he goes you know I, I was with my wife for 25 years and what I really want to know is to be able to understand what a woman feels what a woman thinks and and how she responds to situations so I can be of more help to my daughters I just need to understand women's psyche and the lord looks down on him and goes you want two lanes or four lanes on that bridge <laughs> <laughs> so here, here here's one that's sort of similar there's a guy jogging on the beach and off in the distance he hears this crying it was just kind of odd so he kind of you know, it's along his way, and uh, he jogs over to where there's crying. And, and on a beach blanket, there's a girl laying there with no arms or no legs, and she's crying. She's sobbing. He says, what's wrong? What's wrong? She says, I'm 21 years old. I don't have any arms or any legs, and I've never been hugged by a man before. So he reaches down, picks her up, and he gives her a good squeeze and lays her back down. Immediately, she starts crying again. He says, what's the matter now? She goes, oh, I'm 21 years old. I don't have any arms or any legs, and I've never been kissed by a man before. 
So he reaches down, picks her up, gives her a big wet one on the lips, lays her back down. She starts crying again. He goes, what's wrong now? She goes, I'm 21 years old. I don't have any arms or any legs. I've never been fucked by a man before. So he picks her up and he runs down to the ocean. He throws her in the ocean. He goes, you're fucked now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> From James Rothwell. My wife called me at the bar last night and said, if you're not home in 10 minutes, I'm giving the dinner I cooked for you to the dog. I was home in five minutes. Hate for anything to happen to that dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife filed for divorce today saying I was too un-American. I saw it coming from a kilometer away. Uh, uh, Kyle Warren sent us a video, and it was okay. they had two, they had two people uh, deciding in the video, gay, not gay. So the first guy comes on and goes, I drive a, a 1974 C10 pickup truck. And they said, no, oh, by tone and inflection, he's straight. The next guy comes on and goes, I'm driving a Tesla electric vehicle because I'm saving the planet. And both of them look at each other at the same time and go, gay. So <laughs> thank you, Kyle, for sending that to us. Uh, Garrett uh, Crozier uh, from Smokesnacks, uh, he sent us a video of the guy who's talking to his buddy. And the buddy goes, man, you've got a hell of a sunburn. He goes, yeah, I know, but I, I, I take two Viagra for it every day. And he goes, what does the Viagra do? He goes, not much, but it helps keep the sheets off of me. The sheet tents. <laughs> tents. Oh. Shane, Shane Wagoner. Penguin is having car problems. He takes the car to his uh, local mechanic while the car is being looked at. Penguin went next door to enjoy uh, an ice cream cone. Penguins love ice cream but he tends to make a mess of himself and gets it everywhere. Well, by the time he finished his cone, the car diagnosis was complete. He waddled back to the auto shop, and the mechanic said, it looks like you blew a seal. Penguin replied, no, it's just a little ice cream. <laughs> you I, I like it. I'm giving that one a check mark. I like that one, Shane. Well done. Well done. Uh, Anthony Marshall sent us one. He goes, this one's kind of long uh, and should make you guys laugh. Warning for all the males from me. When buying a security device for a loved one. Last weekend, I saw something at the gun show that sparked my interest. I was looking for a little something different for my wife, Dana. When I came across a 100,000 volt pocket sized purse size taser. The effects of the taser were supposed to be short-lived with no long-term adverse effect on your assailant, allowing her adequate time to retreat to safety, question mark. Way too cool. Long story short, I bought the device and brought it home. I loaded two AAA batteries in the darn thing and pushed the button. Nothing. I was disappointed, and I learned, however, that if I pushed the button and pressed it against a metal surface at the same time, I'd get the blue arc of electricity darting back and forth between the prongs. Awesome. Unfortunately, I have yet to explain, Dana, what what that burn spot is on the face of a microwave. Okay. So I was home alone with this new toy, thinking to myself, it couldn't be all that bad with only two AAA batteries, right? There I sit in my recliner with my cat, Leo, looking on intently, trusting little soul, while I was reading the directions and thinking that I really need to try this thing out on a flesh and blood moving target. I must admit, I thought about zapping Leo for a fraction of a second and then thought better of it. He's such a sweet cat. But if I was going to give this thing to my wife to protect herself against a mugger, I did want some assurances that it would work as advertised. Am I wrong? So there I sat in a pair of shorts and a singlet with my reading glasses perched delicately on the bridge of my nose, directions in one hand, taser in the other. The direction said that a one-second burst would shock and disorient your assailant. 
A two-second burst was supposed to cause muscle spasms and a major loss of body control. And a three-second burst would purportedly make your assailant flop on the ground like a fish out of water. Any burst longer than three seconds would be wasting the batteries. All the while, I'm looking at this little device measured about five inches long and less than three quarters of an inch in circumference, loaded with two itsy bitsy AAA batteries. Pretty cute, really. And thinking to myself, no possible way. What happened next is almost beyond description, but I'll do my best. I was sitting there alone, the cat looking on with his head cocked to one side as if to say, don't do it, stupid. Reasoning that one that a one second burst from such a tiny little old thing couldn't hurt all that bad. And I decided to give myself a one second burst just for the heck of it. I touched the prongs to my naked thigh and pushed the button and Holy mother of God, weapons of mass destruction. What the bleep. I am certain I just met Jesus. I'm pretty sure Hulk Hogan ran through the side door, picked me up in the recliner and then body slammed us both on the carpet over and over and over again. I vaguely recall waking up on my side in the fetal position with tears in my eyes, body soaking wet, both nipples on fire, testicles nowhere to be found, my left arm tucked under my body in the oddest positioning, and tingling in my legs. The cat was making meowing sounds I've never heard before, clinging to the picture frame hanging above the fireplace, obviously an attempt to avoid getting slammed by my body flopping all over the living room. Note, if you ever feel compelled to mug yourself with a taser, one note of caution, there is no such thing as a one second burst when you zap yourself. It will not let go. You will not let go of that thing until it is dislodged from your hand by a violent thrashing about on the floor. A three second burst would be considered conservative. A minute or two later, I can't be sure as time is relative thing at this point. I collected my wits, what little I had left, sat up and surveyed the landscape. My bent reading glasses were on top of the TV. The recliner was upside down and about eight feet or so from where it originally started. My triceps, right thighs, and both nipples were twitching. My face felt like it had been shot with Novocaine, and my bottom lip weighed 88 pounds. I had no control over the drooling. Apparently, I had crapped in my shorts, but was too numb to know for sure, and my sense of smell was gone. I saw a faint smoke cloud above my head, which I believe came from my hair. I'm still looking for my testicles and offering a significant reward for their safe return. P.S. My wife can't stop laughing about my experience, love the gift, and now regularly threatens me with it. All right. There you go. I, I liked it. It was good. It didn't yeah. make me laugh out loud, but I thought it was funny. Yeah. Better him than me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Now, this one was sent in. Good. Uh, it was the alert threats in Europe, uh, purportedly written by John Cleese. It wasn't. Um, but whoever sent it to me didn't leave me a name and never responded to my email back, uh, you know, so that we could, if he won the prize, you know, that we could somehow get in touch with him. But I thought this stuff was pretty funny. So we'd, you know, I'll have Tim read it. All right, so the English are feeling the pinch in <laughs> relation to recent events in Syria and have therefore raised their security level from MIF to peeved. Soon, though, security levels may be raised yet again to irritated or even a bit cross. The English have not been a bit cross since the Blitz of 1940 when tea supplies nearly ran out. Terrorists have been recategorized from tiresome to a bloody nuisance. The last time the British issued a bloody nuisance warning level was in 1588 when threatened by the Spanish Armada. The Scots have raised their threat level from pissed off to let's get the bastards. <laughs> they don't have any other levels. This is the reason they have been used uh, on the front lines of the British Army for the last 300 years. The French government announced yesterday that it has raised its terror level from run to hide. <laughs> from run to hide. The only two higher levels in France are collaborate and surrender. <laughs> the rise was precipitated by a recent fire that destroyed France's white flag factory, <laughs> effectively paralyzing the country's military capacity. Italy has increased its alert level from shout loudly and excitedly to uh, elaborate, elaborate uh, military posturing. 
two more levels remain, ineffective <laughs> combat operations and change sides. The Germans have increased their alert their alert state from disdainful arrogance to dress in uniform and sing marching songs. They also have two higher levels, invade a neighbor and lose. <laughs> Belgians, on the other hand, are all on holiday as usual. The only uh, threat that they're worried about is NATO pulling out of Brussels. The Spanish are all excited to see that their new submarines uh, ready to deploy. These beautifully designed subs have glass bottoms uh, so the new Spanish Navy can get a really good look at the old Spanish Navy. (laughs) Australia, meanwhile, has raised the security level from no worries to she'll be all right, mate. Uh, Two more escalation levels remain. Crikey. I think we'll need to cancel the Barbie this weekend, and the Barbie's canceled. So far, no situation has ever warranted a use of the last... Uh, final escalation level. <laughs> That's pretty All good. Right. Yeah. Egg roll. Egg roll Piper sent this one in. Uh, why did the blonde stare at the carton of orange juice? It said concentrate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Thank you for that. Yeah, Thanks, thank Egg you. Roll. Thank you, Egg Roll. Um, there is a, uh, uh, a meme that uh, and I feel bad. I, I didn't write down who sent this one in, but it is, and I'll hold it up to the camera. So if you're watching at home, you can see it. So it's the benefits of being a pipe smoker and it's a pie chart. And it says lots of sex in a red band, uh, popularity <laughs> in a blue band and happiness in a yellow band. And you can see in the picture, there's only orange, green, and purple. So there you go. All right. Uh, Garrett, again, sent another one. Joke from Pipe Club. You know how to find a good salesman? He's the guy with a wife that with tubes tied and convinces her he needs a vasectomy. That is a good salesman. That's a good salesman. And then Nick uh, Garcia sent us a meme. Um, and I'll hold it up to the camera here. Everybody can see the meme. It's Tiger Woods and John Daly. And uh, written on Tiger Woods, it's all my years of hard work and preparation. And then on John Daly, it says, God, when he hears about my plans. All right. Right here. I had one from uh, Willie Lee Kersey sent one in. All and it right. was a uh, an image of a, a handwritten letter. And um, it says, uh, at the beginning of the letter, it says, to drunk Steve. Please drink this bottle of water before bed. Then you can have the chicken wings in the refrigerator. Hangover Steve will thank you. In the letter sign from Sober Steve. And then at the bottom of the letter, in like real scraggly writing, it says, Fuck you, drunk, scratched out, Sober Steve. I do what I want. P.S. Tell Sober, uh, crossed out, Hangover Steve, he's a little bitch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we <laughs> narrowed it down to I have three. I like the one from Chad. Uh that moment when your steak is on the grill and you can already feel your mouth watering. Do vegan vegans feel the same way mowing the lawn? Uh and then right. Brandon Zamorano, uh, uh the cigarettes and oral sex. And then Shane Wagner, uh, the penguin that blew a seal. Right. I would go with that, but I would switch out. Um, well, I would go with either uh, the the moment the steak's on the grill and the vegan uh, when they're mowing the lawn. And the other one that was funny, I got to laugh out of What's the toughest part about being a vegan? Apparently keeping it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's <was> funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chad has two then in what would be our final four. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, you know what, Chad, he, he pulled out all the stops. I'm he going did. With Chad. Let's go with Chad. So, Let's Chad, go with when Chad. you're watching this, congratulations. You have won this gorgeous. He's always funny all the time. Yeah, that's right. This gorgeous you know? Mersham pipe 
from MBSD Pipes will be headed your way shortly. So congratulations, Chad. All right. Well, we got some good laughs out of that one. Uh, and, you know, my son, uh, the Inspirobot, that was some hilarious stuff. So, Oh, my God. I enjoyed that immensely. That was funny. Yeah. So, we had Jay Furman on last week, uh, and Tim didn't get to talk at all, and I feel terrible, but Tim was having some audio problems because we recorded it on Skype. Here's one. Can you, can, you can't read it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Worry about swords fights? <laughs> Not what? Oh, I can't read it. No. He says, not what you're afraid of. Ah, Worry right. about sword fights. Not what you're afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> These things are... <laughs> Childhood is just wasted money in an art exhibit. <laughs> A a superhuman is basically just a murderer with an evolved title. (laughs) Yep. That was pretty good. So, from last week's episode, we uh, we did get a question from Iron Mike, which I'll read momentarily. Uh, but I want to read some comments on episode 44, which we apologize. We have not posted to uh, podcast Apple and Spotify. I have to put it in something other than Google Docs or Dropbox because it's too large to send to Ben, our producer, to put it on. I was able to get the uh, Skype meeting because we had to have Jay on on Skype which is why the format looked different and everything was kind of different because we couldn't get Jake into or Jay into Riverside. So sorry about that. It's okay. We posted it. People are watching it. And we got some comments on the show. So simple Georgian, another awesome video with you guys. I met Jay at the Chicago pipe show, had a great time and conversation with him. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you, Willie Lee. Uh, user CW3DF8SI1W. Enjoyed your show. Thank you for the information. God bless and stay safe. All right. Uh, Smokestacks, Garrett. Uh, Jay Furman is fantastic. What a great guy. I hope to meet him sometime. Uh, I'm with you all about the FOMO. If I can't get it, I don't want to like it. There's enough stuff in in life you can't relive, so why sign up for even more of it? If it, I, I could only get my hands on some satchel of Richard. Well, that's... <laughs> Your blend, cowboy. Right. <laughs> you guys got my votes on, on Pipe Week. I'm with you on the bookshop, Jim. It's kind of flat and what folks versus what folks build it up to be. I just got a 1930 set of Pipe Dreams from Sir Walter Raleigh with its unused pipe. Such a great <laughs> episode. Thanks, guys. Terry Brewster. Wow. Another great show, guys. Always great to see Jay Furman. Great insights from you all on tobaccos and pipes. I'm with you on helping anybody in any way with their journey. I wish I had as much help when I was starting out. It's got to be enjoyable or it's not worth doing. And having someone to ask and guide you, it's wonderful. Thank you again for a great episode. And then, as always, um, Yusuf Syed, who did win an award for being the best commenter. uh, And he's actually. He should. Yeah, guys, He's the bomb, man. That guy. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Awesome show. Tattoo and head shaven. Haunted bookshop. I only smoke in the winter. Nice idea. Pick blindly. Tobacco and pipe. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic day. Greetings from South Africa. Thank you, Yusuf. We, we appreciate Great you guy. joining us every week. It means a lot to us. So that's what we got. We didn't get a comment from Blake this week, so he we must have been busy. And we need to get Blake on yeah. at some point. Yep. Now, you know, that uh, uh, I really wasn't able to participate last week, but that, it was okay because um, I got to listen to YouTube banter about uh, tobacco. And um, I don't know, you know, I think I got uh, some additional insights listening to two different perspectives. So it was good. Good content. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it's always, you know, and Jay has been incredibly instrumental in helping me with ESF. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why there are seven blends you know there's three blends that have his name there's Furman's Furman's blend 
and Furman's Navy, which are available only through EMC Custom Cops. And then there's uh, Furman's Reserve, which is the one he had with the Bird Dog Chocolate Whiskey on it, which is an excellent blend. And then he came up with Gemini, and he was instrumental in picking Meteora, and um, and he helped with, uh, you know, some of Mike's blends. You know, he was the first ben- uh, person I sent him to to test him, and Jay has always been just such a positive, wonderful influence, and I can't ever say thank you enough to him. Um, because he was there at the beginning, you know, when I had a one page blend list and, you know, everything mm-hmm. had Latake and Barik. So yeah, I appreciate yeah. you. Now, he's always, you, uh, uh, you know, what everything he does, he does for the benefit of the community. Um, and, uh, you know, he's an anchor. He is. <clears throat> Absolutely love the guy, you know, and I could just sit and listen to Jay talk. I, I tried to ask him. Uh, enough open into questions where we could just hear his thoughts on things, you know, and, and Jay yeah, right. is just as right. gracious as yeah, he that's could possibly why it was be. fine being, yeah, being silent for me. I, I had nothing to add, you know, yeah. so just let him talk. It's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, you know, just a, a fun episode and we need to get Mike back on to do part two. Cause I really do want to hear what Mike's top five blends are. And I do want to talk more about Mike. Uh, with tobacco, uh, simply mm-hmm. because I find uh, tobacco really, really interesting. I have to get a so. uh, stop at the Seven um, uh, Eleven and get a uh, a bottle of Fireball and put it in the mail to him and tell him, "Here, get ready." <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Cost you Jeez. more to ship it than it did to, to actually buy right. it. Right? You know? Yeah. It's a dollar Fire- twenty nine. Shipping was fifteen. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And that was the quart yeah. bottle. Yeah. You, know? you have made some amazing pipes. You know, we didn't really get to talk about some of the pipes you made, but you made that beautiful horn, which I see has sold already, um, which I thought was just a, a absolutely gorgeous pipe. It's still up on the website, uh, your website, uh, pbhpp.com. Yeah, I don't think it's sold. Uh, yeah, Did it, it sell? Did. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember from day to day what the hell I did. I tell you what, it was a busy week this week. I sold, I'm like, I'm I'm out of pipes again. Are you really? Yeah, yep. I got a couple that are left, but, you know, I uh, put, I don't know, six or seven on there, and they're gone. Yeah. No. No. So, no. and then, you know, I got some commissions. There was some, there's a, this, this Dublin here that, um, Got some mm-hmm. blasted panels. Oh, yeah. And, I saw you know, your, your little short on that, and that's gorgeous. The the paneled side, and it's partially rusticated. That is a very yeah. sharp look. And, it, and what's the blue stem material that you used on that? Um, you know, this was a uh, – I made a pipe for Terry Brewster that had this material. And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a cast resin. Um. Oh, very. And, who did uh, that yeah, one for you? Really? Who did the resin who did, for they, you? Who did, no, I I bought it. Oh, I know, but I mean, yeah. Did, did you buy it from Premel or did you buy it from? No, no, no um, I got it from uh, Exotic Blanks, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a like a uh, cast resin uh, pen blank. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very sharp. Yeah. All right. And, and what so, else did you make this yeah. week? I, I saw those. Well, and then, well, there's ones that I made that actually went out already. We're sold oh, went out. But this you is made another here. one of those. This has got a, yeah, that tulip look. It's yeah, kind of got like a one. Iron Mike. Yeah, Iron Mike bought uh, one that I made that was like this with the green stem, mm-hmm. and um, and then I got a uh, a note from somebody that said, "Hey, if you make another one, I'd be happy to have it." So I thought, um, I happen to have one in in progress, and I had it cut out and everything. I just needed to get it. Get yeah, so, shape. Yeah, and and the partial yeah. rustication is just a killer look. I absolutely love that. Yeah, I like that too. You know that that really is a, a difference maker. So, yeah, and I just think it and looks sharp. I, uh, thank you. I, I gotta get before the summer's out. I'm going to get my uh, glass cabinet moved up um, near the sh- into the shop. So mm-hmm. that I can, I don't have enough power to drive the compressor and the uh, the vacuum. 
Mm. And so that, that blast cabinet just fills up. It's like a giant cloud in there. I can blast for, for a little while, but I got nothing to pull the, the dust and, you know, the yeah. media and stuff out. And, um, and the back there with, uh, that's, that doubles as the uh, the chicken coop. So I got mm-hmm. like chickens in there, and there's me sandblasting and stuff. Feathers flying every once in a while. A feather will fly out through my uh, through the nozzle, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like Green Acres. Yeah, you know, fe- feather blasting, a new technique developed by Tim. How'd you develop this, Tim? <laughs> uh, chicken got caught in the intake, and the next thing you know. <laughs> I got 20,000 pin feathers yeah. flying through my, my sandblaster. Oh, yeah. Now, so, yeah, I, I can't wait to get that out of there. I know nothing about sandblasting. So when you, when you sandblast, does it recycle the what media? What a coincidence. It... Me too. <laughs> yeah. Does it... Yeah. Well, the way that, the way that I have it set up is it has the capacity to recycle the media. So okay. w- the way mine is, is it, there's a, there's a, there's a hopper. Mm-hmm. And then um, there's a uh, the, um, uh, media drops down into the bottom of a hopper, and then the uh, the air blows across the bottom of it, and it's like a venturi, and it and it uh, pulls the media out and sends mm-hmm. it back up through the tube, as opposed to a siphon, because the other way is to you know you've got a siphon hose down in the pile of media, mm-hmm. and um, and then this has got. Uh, you know, baffles in it so that you can put a uh, a vacuum in there, mm-hmm. um, and and pull out all the dust and everything that's being produced as you um, uh, sandblast. As and then if you right. on yeah, and on your vacuum, if you have a cyclone, mm-hmm. um, then you your media will drop down into the can. The dust will go into the uh, the vacuum, but the um, uh, the heavier media will drop down into the, the the bottom of the can, and you just dump your media back in. You know, you can save the media. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't have enough power back there, to, so that when the uh, the air compressor kicks back on, if the um, if the vacuum is running and the mm-hmm. air compressor kicks back on, <laughs> the lights go out, <laughs> everything <laughs> shuts down. <laughs> the whole neighborhood goes brown. <laughs> so it's basically a lot of Los Angeles. All right, fair enough. You know, right, right, exactly. All the wires get hot. You know, yeah. <laughs> so the glow from the fire, where... you know, leads you to the right. exit door. So it's fine. It's fine. We're all fine yeah. here. So, I, mm-hmm. what size compressor do you use? I mean, what what size compressor do you have? I, you know what, I got uh, what is it like a forty gallon tank. Um, they use okay. a lot of air, and um, um, it it you know you can put two hundred uh, psi in the tank in the mm-hmm. forty uh, gallon tank, and um, you know I can run it at um, you know fifty fifty psi um, roughly, but. I I have a hard time back there getting the power that I need to be able to run it the way it needs to, so that I can mm. get an efficient blast, so I can match the CFM coming uh-huh. out of the air compressor to the nozzle. Okay, so I so, assume you have like hundred amp service out there. Yeah, that's it. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And right. I, and I think that thing is on like a I don't know like a fifteen amp breaker or something, but mm. you know that's it's not enough. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. I don't want to put a bigger I don't want to put a bigger heavier circuit in because I the wire won't I don't think the wire will support it. I don't want to burn the place down. You know, that's kind of cutless, don't you think? <laughs> yes. <it is. laughs> Chicken's got a right to live though. You know? It would end that problem. <laughs> you know, when are we gonna get rid of these chickens today? <laughs> Yeah, we're we're having a chicken cook off. Really? What'd you do? Yeah, well, I put a penny behind I put a penny behind the fuse in the barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Oh. Little little thunder and lightning here tonight. So All right. That one sounded like it did close. Um so 
let's see what I, there was something else I wanted to talk about, and of course my train of thought left at the station without me. So, well, uh, next week we'll either have to record Saturday night or Tuesday night because I'm going to be on Sunday and Monday. So, there you go. All right, we'll we'll figure All that right. out. Yeah, you know. Inside. We got uh, we got the the Fourth of July coming up this. Uh, well, happy well, Independence Day, everybody! Coming yeah, up this yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. This will probably post somewhere right around Thursday. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, America, for being two hundred and some odd years old this year. So, mm-hmm. I don't think either one of us are going to get to the three hundredth anniversary because that will be uh, twenty one seventy six, and I don't know how old you'll be, but I'll yeah, be it's not uh, going to happen. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be 111, so I don't think I'm going to make it. I can make uh. it. <laughs> I'll be like Joe Biden, you know, my pants full oh. of shit. <laughs> Man, I, yeah. I, wow. I, I mm-hmm. did not watch the mm-hmm. debate live um, just because I, you know, it's. Yeah, I couldn't. T- I, I got. Oh, it was just sandblasting. You never the get the. Crack. You never get that time back. You know. No, no, and I, you know, I, I don't. Uh, in October, it'll be six years since I've turned the TV on. Um, and I, you know, I read the commentary. I read the cr- critiques of of the debate, and you know, just you just can't all those be debates are shit shows. All of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just I think t- I, I didn't television. watch it either. I w- you know, I watch just some of the cuts from different news articles and stuff like that. And I was like, boy, I'm glad I didn't watch it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, television is such. The nicest thing I can say is it's a shit show. You know, yeah. I, I just I never feel smarter after having watched television. That's why I quit. And And really, the main reason yeah. I quit watching TV was because I hated what they've done to sports. You know, I don't want to watch a four hour baseball game. I don't want to watch, yeah. uh, you know, a three and a half hour football game, you know, because every time, oh, Steve has touched his stocks, we'll be back after these commercial messages, you know, and right, right. And commercials where yeah. they used to be funny and entertaining are absolutely horrifically terrible. You know, the Doug and Limu Emu, whoever, how does this get approved? I want to sit in one of those meeting ones where somebody does this commercial and shows it to the executives and go, oh, yeah, that's a winner. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What happened? So you can punch the guy in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, the it's all so idiotic. And, like, I agree with you. You just feel like, God, why am I watching this? What's wrong with me that I would waste my time watching this? Yeah. I You know, I'm, I'm a reader. I, I prefer – to read um yeah you know and and somebody sent me uh a meme uh today and it was trust in the government is on the 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 y-axis and (laughs) knowing history is on the 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 y-axis and the line goes you know the more you know about history the less you trust your government so oh yeah big time i know you know. you know, my son for Father's Day got me uh, the new Jack Carr. You ever read those those Jack Carr novels? Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, he's the ex ex uh, um, seal that writes these uh, espionage and you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, shoot 'em up, you know that kind of thing. And they're yeah. uh, they're fast read. Um, you know, probably written at like an eighth grade level or something like that. So you can plow through them pretty, pretty fast. I loaned one yeah. to my mom and she said, because the guy's like, uh, you know, everything is like eighth grade level unless he talks about a gun and he gives you all the specs on the gun. <laughs> and I gave one to my nine, my 92 year old mom and said, here, read this. It's pretty good. She said, all he did was write about guns. I don't know what those are. I said, anytime you see you know, a sentence that's, you know, it's like a whole paragraph with one period at the end where it's a description of uh, some sort of weapon. Just think gun and then pass it yeah. up, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's black. It's scary. Just let it go. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, um, I have been trying to get, I want to get a set of the Craig Johnson Longmire mysteries. Um, 
Because oh, yeah. I think one of the last TV shows that I was watching was Longmire. Uh, yeah. And I enjoyed uh, that particular television show, which, of course, they, you know, it, it was on, what was it, on A&E. And it was like the, it was their highest rated program. And they said, oh, we, we are going to cancel this. Well, of course you are. You know, it's your highest rated program. Of course you're going to cancel it. Yeah. <sighs> I tried to watch that for a while until I realized that this is a small town in Oklahoma, or was it Oklahoma or something like that? Wyoming. Small yeah. town. There's probably Wyoming. Yeah, there's like uh, 102 people in the town, and every week there's a murder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walt, you're running out of residents, you know. Right. And the Filipino to... guy that's the fake Indian that owns the bar, he's never <laughs> one of the victims. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but you know, I, like I said, I just I gave up completely on TV. I can't watch the debates. I, you know, and I just, yeah. you know, apparently yeah, we never turn sh- that thing on. No, never. No. You know, my my wife will watch the news in the morning when she's having breakfast, and you know, she swears at the TV like a drunk sailor. Um, you know, she gets, <laughs> you know, she's very politically uh, active, so. She she gets a little hostile at the TV, and it's kind of fun. But I just, I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't need that to piss me off. I could get pissed off easily yeah, enough yeah. on my own. Plenty of things that are going to piss me off anyway. So, uh-huh. you know, uh, avoid drama, kids. Uh, you know, live your life right. that way. Right. Yep. That's so, my credo. Yeah. L- live yeah. a live a mundane, boring life. That's right. No drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-uh. Well, give your kids good advice. You know, well, that's all you can do. Lead them on yeah. the path and spoil the grandchildren rotten and send them home to their parents and hope the parents can handle it. So that's the fun that's part right. of being grandpa. You know. I know. My my granddaughter turned 21 last weekend. Um, oh, wow. Which was um, a hoot because we, we called, you know, we, we did a FaceTime call with her. And, you know. And I looked at her dad, my son-in-law, and said, uh, fireball? He goes, oh, you got to see what I got. <laughs> He's got this handle of fireball. And I'm like, oh, boy!" <laughs> <laughs> and then they sent me a video about 10 o'clock at night. And, you know, my granddaughter was just on fire. She was hilarious. Like, way, dad. You know, <laughs> make funny drunks. That's, that's the yeah. best way to be. Yeah, Ben turns... Uh... Our, our producer Ben turns twenty one uh, the end of August, yeah. And uh, we're gonna make it a, the journey down to Columbus, and we're gonna take him to I don't know. I'm thinking they got this place is called the Brew Dog. Um, uh, it's a, a brewery with a hotel. Hmm. Okay. And um, so you know you can go and enjoy yourself, and yeah, don't have to get stay yourself anywhere but there. You know, yeah, get yourself a room. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So we might do that. Excellent. All right. Oh, I, you know, I was talking, we were talking with Jay last week, and I wanted to talk about uh, this Dr. Grabo. It was part of a set of, and why I'm fond of, of Grabo so much. So I got this pipe, and I'll show it, hold it up and show it to you. But it was part of uh, an estate pipe sale, and I think there were like 10 pipes, and they were all, you know, they were just in tough shape. And this one uh, that I'm holding up, and you can see there's a brass like inset in here, and it is a Grebo mm-hmm. Grand Duke. Um, and and the guy that had it before me loved this pipe because he had tried to hot glue the stumble broke, and you can see here in the in the frame where it broke along the stumble, and he had hot glued it and taped it, trying to keep it together. Um, and I, you know, here was a guy that absolutely loved this pipe, and now here it is. It's come to my house. It's in my collection, and I took epoxy and uh, brass powder, uh, you know, to give it. You know, I'm not trying to. You were. I was never going to hide it, and I really didn't want to put, you know, just clear epoxy in it so it looks like crap. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do this up, and and brought it back to life. And I smoked this pipe about once a week. Just because this was at some point somebody's favorite pipe, you know that they put all this effort and work into it, and it's a Dr. Grebo, 
you know, uh, I'm sure this is probably, you know, 25 to 30 years old. It's an older gray bow. Um, and it, it probably paid six bucks for it at the drugstore when you bought yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. And, and, and rather than give up on it, you know, he's got hot glue and he's taping it up to hold it together so he can keep smoking it. And then it finally passed away. And that's why I, I really like estate pipes, you know, and, and I have my crack dealer, Mitchell. Um, hey, uh, got some more estate pipes. So I, uh, I did, re- I get to finish up uh, the last box I got of them. Um, and I said, you know, if you see some K Woody's in there, uh, send me a K Woody. So I got this little lightweight apple billiard K Woody and got it. And, and, you know, I have to work at it a little bit, but it looks brand new. And, and you know that this pipe is probably, it, it's the drinkless K Woody. So it's probably, oh, 25, 30 years old again. And it, it really came out nicely. It's in great shape. It, it, whoever had it before, you know, smoked it. it. It needed some work, but you know, now I got it back, and it looks almost pristine. And it'll go into my collection with pride. I haven't even smoked it yet. And then I got yeah. another K Woody, which was a billiard, and somebody did smoke this one heavily. Um, you know, it it had seen some use and wear, but it cleaned up so nicely, and, and the grain on it. You know, it's got some straight grain on the bottom and some bird's eye on the sides. And it's just an interesting pipe. And again, you know, this was somebody smoked this enough that, you know, it it had some rim char on it. It had, you know, one of those cakes inside of it where, you know, how did you get tobacco in this? Um, And it was just really, you know, something interesting. And then there's this little... uh. It is a special Dr. Graybo, and it's the insignia on it is it's a Linkman's Dr. Graybo. And I think this was something that that they made. And what's really interesting about it, and you can't see it here hardly, but on the inside, it has a screen on it. And that screen is actually, I don't know if it's glued or soldered in, but it is an integral part of the pipe that they somehow got this screen in. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. You know, I, I, it'll be a cool smoke, so I'll take that out one of these days. Yeah. And again, it's just a small little apple, nothing exciting or spectacular. Yeah. But, you know, when you get them for 8 or 10 bucks, you know, these are going to be great smokers. Yeah, can't and then I got, yeah. 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 And here's a little Starfire Graybo, which is from a, a discontinued series. And again, just a little apple, looks sharp, cleaned up nicely. You know, it's got the grain. And it's got the interesting grain look on it. You know, it's got that flame grain and little bird's eye up on the top on on the other side. And it's just an interesting looking pipe. And, you know, again, uh, you can bring those back. You you know, you you don't have to start off with, you know, a a, a $500 artisan pipe. You know, you can pick up a Dr. Graybo or you can pick up estate pipes and and clean them up and and smoke them and, and have a little piece of history in your hands. So. And I, yeah, my, my one and only, Oh, go ahead. Finish no, up. Uh, Sorry. Well, and when I'm restoring them, I, I kind of like to, to have a mental story in my mind. You know, this was someone's pipe like that, that Linkman's gray boat. You know, that thing was caked. I, I, I seriously could not get, uh, the width of a screwdriver into, you know, it was just caked. Wow. You know, somebody smoked this. Wow incredibly frequently, you know, smoked it, you know, that, that, that probably had 10 years worth of, of cake in it. And, you know, once I got it cleaned up, it's like, Oh, this is a pretty cool little pipe. You know, once yeah. you get it, you so, know, ream up still a little, little bit and, of pipe here. Yeah. A little bit of pipe yeah. left in this. So a little piece of history, you know? Yeah. And hopefully when I pass, yeah. someone will pick up my pipes and say, Hey, you know, this, this was in this guy's collection and, and make up their own story about it. So, Yep. Yeah, my one and only Graybo. Um, it's on the it's on the fix it pile. I went to my grandson's baseball game. And I was standing there, had the dog on the mm-hmm. leash, and mm-hmm. I had a pack, pouch of tobacco, and I was smoking that thing. And I got done smoking it. Game was over. I put it in my back pocket with the um, uh, pouch of empty pouch, tobacco pouch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And I uh, thought, remember when you get back in the truck, you got to take this thing out of your pocket. Don't sit on it. That's not what I did. <laughs> I sat right on it. Nice. So, And when nice I got view. home, I'm such an absent mind. I got home and, you know, <laughs> unloading everything. And it's like, what's, what is that in my pocket? I reached back there and it was the pipe in two pieces. Oh. Oh. What, so, did you break the stem yeah. or did you break the stem? Oh, the stem broke the shank oh, okay. right in two. All right. So, well, I, I, yeah. there's this guy I know. Hey, you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to do it. You got to do it completely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I, I have about three weeks worth of blends that I have been making, testing, trying. Um, that, you know, I, I have too much free time and too mm-hmm. much tobacco. So, um, so let's, let's talk about some of the ones I made. So this is, uh, Oso Gris, which is gray bear in Spanish. And it has, um, this dark air cured Virginia that I have, I, I had some extra of it and I put the apple vinegar, apple flavoring casing on the Virginia. And then some red Virginia, some stove Virginia, a little Latakia, a little bright Virginia, a little lemon leaf. Um, and really like how this came out. It is a very uh, faint scent of apple to it. Um, and it just, it, it's a very, very pleasant smoke. This would be like an all day, you know, with, with the Latakia and the stoved red, you, you, you get a very smooth kind of elegant smoke out of it. And I, I liked it. And then. Next, Sounds good. I made, uh, you know, in keeping with my, I'll put things in Spanish because I'm running out of Irish and, and English and Scottish villages. Uh, this is um, uh, Matapalo, and it is an English blend, um, but it is a light English. Uh, it's Basma and Cream of God and two Virginias and some Latakia, and it has just got a really nice... Uh, really nice, warm, just pleasant English kind of smell to it. This is definitely something that will be an all-day smoke, and I've, um, I'm smoking it kind of regularly now. So, hmm. uh, and then this is the one that uh, Jay and I were talking about last week. Uh, it's called Ciudad uh, Antigua, which is Spanish for old city. Um. And Ciudad Antigua is, uh, it's two cigar leaves, Brazilian Foyano and Glasgow Magistrate, some lemon leaf Virginia, uh, some ca- two types of Cavendish, and some long cut Virginia. And, man, that's a tasty one. I, I really, is it good? yeah, I like yeah. that one. Jay liked so that, it. Jay came up with, that was his idea? No, or? no, no, I just no. sent it to Jay. Because sometimes when I'll make blends, uh, because Jay likes cigar blends, and what I love best about Jay is I get very, very honest opinions from him. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're, he's got a, a new blend coming out uh, that'll be on the next blend list called Introspection that we talked about in the last episode um, that has Black Cavendish with um, a Frangelico casing, which is a... a why can't I think of the name of the nut? A hazelnut. Uh, Frangelico is mm-hmm. a hazelnut liqueur. And then it has, uh, I don't know, I'll tell you in a second. <sighs> and, it, you know, he was specific about what he wanted on it. I'm like, okay. Uh, so here we go. Let's get to introspection. Uh, maybe. Maybe I'll get to it. Uh, so it's got. Um, no, that is it's not the version that I used. Uh, uh, that's a problem with spreadsheets, you know. Uh, well, what did I do with introspection? So uh, it's Burley Forward. So it's got Kentucky Burley and Burley Red Tips and a little Bright Virginia and a little Perique and some black Cavendish and it really came out, um, you know, it, it, like Jay said, it is the, a very good, 
morning coffee smoke. You know, you got your coffee and you get something burly forward and, you know, mm-hmm. it's very nice. So, and then one that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's summertime and people are always saying, oh, you know, I, I like to smoke lighter stuff. So I came up with Pelican Key uh, and Pelican Key is lemon leaf, bright Virginia, that dark air cured with the apple scent on it, Samsung, uh, a little Tennessee, Kentucky, light fire cured, rustica, and then topped with lemon bitters. And I really think that for those of you that like something light, um, a summery smoke, <clears throat> this is a pretty good one. With yeah, you know, the lemon bitters really make it feel like, you know, you're in someplace tropical. So Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's see what else today. Oh, um, I did make Old Confederate for Willie Lee. Uh, so yeah. he's on the road. He's uh, uh, an over-the-road truck driver. Won't be back home until the 12th of July. So it's been sitting at at his, at the post office waiting for him to pick it up. But it is a, uh, a light English blend, again, with Orientals, Virginias, uh, and a little bit of Cavendish. Um, and it is really, uh, I would use the word elegant to describe it. So, there we go. And then lastly, um, I, I was reading history. Busy. Well, it's been three weeks since I've talked about any new blends. So, you know, I, I came up with a couple of them every week and I was reading last week about Patrick Henry, um, because, you know, there's that joke that. You know, uh, you know, when a, a Muslim dies, he's, you know, he goes and gets 40 virgins when, when, when he gets to heaven to be with Allah. And someone had made the joke that I think it'd be a lot funnier if he got to heaven and got 40 Virginians, you know, George Washington, <laughs> Robert E. Lee, Patrick Henry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was reading about his his family farm, which was called Red Hill. You're going to so, get a letter. Oh, you know, you're going to get a letter. Well, yeah, duh. I, I kind of expect it. Go, I'm, go on. I'm going to get his a family. St- sternly worded comment from someone somewhere. You're going to um, get a, a letter that's going to come in a box that ticks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're an interesting now person in the same way <laughs> as a bomb is interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. So. Um, Patrick Henry's Red Hill, uh, if I can get to it here on my list. Uh, you know what? Let me just hit find and select. This is too long. Uh, and we couldn't find it. All right. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's type it into something else. Sign. No, no. Well, every now and then, Jim, you do something stupid, and the name you put on it isn't the name that's... Now, that's a problem. I'll put, like, test blend one, and then I'll come up with a label for it and forget to change it, and then won't remember what it was that I did, because I have that short-term memory problem. Uh, so Patrick it's, Henry's uh, farm is is a uh, tourist attraction. It yeah. is, it is, and you know, here's a man, um, you know that that was a great proponent of America's independence from uh, the British, and yeah, you know, signer, you know, give me liberty and give me death, um, and I thought it was an interesting character, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to make a blend. We went to so. Monticello a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. That was during the, the pandemic. And, um, you know, the, the Monticello is a, uh, it's a UNESCO property now. It's owned by the United Nations. And that's really? some shit. Yes. And so. Why? What um, the hell happened? Uh, and because uh, everything's upside down. And, and so um, we were walking to the. Uh, uh, you know, like the visitor center mm-hmm. and some woman that works there comes walking by us. And she said, uh, we said, is the, where's the visitor center? She pointed that way. And she goes, now remember to put a mask on. 
I'm like, yeah, right. We'll get right on that. So she's, you know, walks past us and um, gets in her car and she drives then from behind us and passes us, her Prius hanging out the window. Remember to put a mask on. And we're like, you know what? Let's get the, we'll get the fuck out of here. We're not going in there. I'm not giving one penny to the UNESCO. Yeah, yeah. forget it. No. No. So there's no. that one down the shooter. Forget yeah. about uh, Monticello. I always wanted to see that, but yeah. not now. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, Jefferson was kind of an important figure in American history, perhaps. Yeah. Just a little yeah. bit. You know. Yeah, but I think what the uh, uh, the lesson of the day that you were going to get is, you know, what a what an asshole he was because you know he was a slaveholder. That was what the whole trip was about in in there. So it's like, you know, feel bad, feel bad about this. Yeah, that's what UNESCO okay. did do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the last blend. Uh, that I made is called Tennessee winter. And I, um, I have this rum molasses mixture that I, uh, that I use as a topping. So I use some light fire cured red Virginia, some Cavendish, little rustica, uh, some, uh, uh, light fire burley, light fire cured burley, a little crumb of God and Tennessee winter. And this is another one of those early morning, have your coffee out on the porch kind of smokes. It's good enough to be an all-day smoke, um, but it's just really, you know, one of those, I don't have to think about it too much. I can just relax and enjoy it and kind of fun. So that's yeah. what I've been working on. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you, ha you have been busy. A little bit. A little that's bit. good. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, Ilan from Israel. um took his stuff to the pipe club and I have got a, a rash of people contacting me from his pipe club, you know, oh, no kidding. <laughs> sending stuff off to Israel. So right. Spendy right. shipping stuff to Israel. Just FYI. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I built a pipe for him and, mm -hmm. uh, it went out beginning of the week, maybe something like that Yeah, to Israel. You know, it's like, Okay, enjoy the trip. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a while. Yeah, because... Well, uh, you know, it poked uh, holes in the boxes, box so we could breathe, <laughs> you know. It's going to be a while. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, you know. But I will be in uh, Houston next weekend. So I will fly out Sunday and then uh, go to meet with some folks Monday and then be back Monday night and off we go. So Okay. But we can record Saturday. We can record Tuesday. Your call. I'll give me a day or two. All right. We'll work on it. Yeah. Anything else we got to talk about today? Kind of a short episode. We got nothing. We too many laughs. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, God. You know. we, got, we, we cranked up. But <laughs> that, oh. um, the, the jokes were good. Thanks, everybody, for sending the jokes in. I just love the way people participate in these things. They, they make oh, me laugh. Yeah. We always get good ones. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So Did let's... you know a piranha? That a, <laughs> a piranhas can completely devour, devour a child in less than 10 seconds? Oh, by the way, I lost my job at the aquarium today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Titanium Mike. So he wanted... So here's a question for the show. I'm searching for a savory or salty in my pipe tobacco. I assume it comes from one of the Orientals. Can you discuss? Okay. Hmm. All right. So savory um, or salty. I, I consider, you know, so when I open up a jar of Bosma or I open up Samson or I open up Izmir or, or Krum of Grad, which are the four main Orientals that I use. I also have Smyrna and some Turkish ribbon uh, that I use too. Um, I, I do not get salty from those. I get, uh, depending on which one, uh, almost a floral incense type of note from it. Um, 
I, I really don't, I can't say that I've ever tasted salty from just raw tobacco. That, that's not one of the flavor profiles that, that came through. So from that standpoint, um, I, I don't know how to give you a salty flavor in a tobacco. Um, I do have my, uh, so there was a great article and I don't remember if I got it from whole leaf or total leaf, but I think, I think it was whole leaf. Um, it's a, about how they did flavoring and toppings and it was written in 1972. Um, and I, I kind of use that as the guideline of how I, when I'm doing a casing or a topping and I really don't like to, but I do. Um, so I will look into that and, and do some research. And he says, you know, have you ever thought about putting soy sauce, you know, to give it that, that savory flavor to it? And I'm like, no. But you know what? Yeah. I'm going to work on something this week for you, Iron Mike. Um, I, I don't I know what that will do. You put, you put fire to um, soy sauce. Um, it's going to reduce down to a sticky gob at the bottom of your pipe don't you think I don't know. Uh, I, well what i'm hoping is that you know because i'm using whole leaf it's very receptive to uh, absorb absorption uh and mm -hmm. I, I think i would have to put a very light uh spray on that uh and and have it absorb in before it got pressed or let it absorb in and not press it because I am finding some things are better not pressed as a go mm -hmm. forward. Aromatics will not be pressed. Um, uh, simply because I found um, that the flavor that people are looking for. So like when somebody wanted Rio Manzano, which is apple river and it's got an apple flavoring on it. When I press it, the apple flavor doesn't come to the forefront. It disappears way into the background. But when it's in a ribbon form, it, it stays forefront. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Jay and I had a, a rather lengthy discussion because his blend, Introspection, is superior in a ribbon cut. It is not better pressed. And I, I, I don't have the expertise or... I just know what I like tastes better. Uh, you know, I, I know the form that I like it in, and I have to think that I, I like to think of myself as every man uh, because I like all tobaccos. So, you know, if you're a burly guy, you know, I'm with you. I like burlies too. Um, mm -hmm. But there, it's, it was just better ribbon. When you pressed it, um, it, it lost kind of the hazelnut feel to it. And more of the alcohol that's in Frangelico came forward, so it added more of an alcohol taste to it. But when it wasn't pressed, the hazelnut flavor stayed forward. So, yeah. well, I guess I, it would make sense that when you press when you press it, um, you think about the uh, the mass of tobacco. Um, mm -hmm. it, whatever in there that can can migrate is going to migrate to the out, outside you all the pressure the majority of the pressure is on the inside of the puck mm -hmm. less pressures on the outside so whatever's in there is going to escape to the outside it's going to reduce the the um the topping to just the, the outside layer let's say that um, could be and maybe you know you get some evaporation off of that too and you know you end up yeah. losing it yeah yeah but but as a go forward, and, uh, you know, I, I was talking to Craig, who, who by the way, I, Craig, so that you know, this pen sits in the pipe and tobacco office, and every card that I write uh, is written with your pen, uh, this glow-in-the-dark pen, which is just cooler than shit, uh, and it's a great feel. But I, I sent uh, Craig some of the pecan reprise, and when I sent it out to... Uh, David, who was the, the person that, that designed the blend, I had pressed it and it was good pressed, but I have to tell you when I smoked, you know, when I, when I was testing it ribbon versus pressed, as I started to come up with, you know, maybe there's some discrepancies, 
it pecan reprise was much better ribbon than pressed so that's okay. kind of where this all started and i sent some to him and i'll see what craig thinks because he he does like a good aromatic and people seem to like the pecan and i am yeah. excited to hear from tom and nathan from pipe tobacco and whiskey because uh, i finally got tom's blend where i think it's right and i found this new flavor new flavoring uh john a friend from north carolina wanted me to make this blend he goes you know I really want you to make this blend called persimmon pudding. And I'm like, okay, I have no idea what persimmon tastes like. I, have, To be honest with you, the only reference I had to persimmon is what that's what golf clubs, you know, woods back in, you know, from uh, as long back until the 80s, all woods, golf woods were made out of persimmon wood. Uh, that was just oh, yeah. a very, and I've never had a persimmon. I fruit. had no idea. Well, apparently the persimmon tree has fruit, and it has a very unique, very sweet flavoring. So I, I sent a jar off to John uh, that I made, and then Tom's blend, which is the pipe tobacco and whiskey uh, Tom's blend, I, I put some persimmon because he really wanted a sweetness to it, and I thought the persimmons was uh, the persimmon flavoring was exactly what he was looking for, or at least what I pictured in my mind. So we'll find out. Mm. There you go. And we'll see. So there might be two blends Indeed. with uh, persimmons on it coming out. So, yeah, well, that'd be. Uh, it's not something that I would think of ever. Could be persimmon no. flavor. You know, and that's the great thing about this, Tim. It, it, you know, when somebody brings you an idea for a pipe, I want you to do this. It's like, oh, cool. I had never thought about that. Well, it's the same for me. You know, I, I, I had never heard of persimmons. And when I talked to John on the phone, he's like, oh, yeah, it's my, my grandmother used to have persimmon trees out in her yard. And if a persimmon tree fell on me, I couldn't identify it. I have no idea. What yeah, right. Like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't even know if they Where do they grow? Me. Yeah. I, apparently in North Carolina. So. Oh, okay. And, it, and it's got to be a hardwood because they made golf clubs out of it. So. Sure. Huh. Hmm. There you go. So. Interesting but that's, stuff. You know, yeah. I never would have, if John hadn't called and said, I, I want persimmon and I want the blend to be called persimmon pudding. I, okay. Uh, well, I where never. did you find flavoring for that? Oh, it was uh, a search. Um, I bet. <laughs> it needs, um, in fact, um, I don't have the bottle anymore because I put it in a spray bottle. Did it, um, did it come in bit, bitters or did you had to make it? No, no, it, it's just a flavoring. It just, okay, you know, it, you know, all flavoring that you get. So like if you go on Amazon, you go to the grocery store and you flip it over, you'll see that all of it has a certain percentage of glycopropyl alcohol, which mm -hmm. as you guys all know, not one of my favorite things. Um, and, and that's why I struggle with uh, particularly American aromatics because they're just drowning in the stuff. Yeah. So I found a company. Um, that that makes uh, that has a much lower percentage of glycopropyl alcohol, and I can stomach it. So that's. But the persimmons, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm on the dark web. You know, we'll trade it for Bitcoin. No, I just want. Right, right. <laughs> uh, could you get if you can if you can find me a baby? <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to trade you four ounces for two kidneys. All right. Well, let me go see. <laughs> See if I have some slow moving neighbors that I could possibly hit right. with a tranquilizer dart. <laughs> but I did find it. Right. Um, surprisingly enough. And it took uh two weeks for it to arrive and sent it off to John. So we'll see what John thinks and we'll see what right. Tom thinks. So and I apparently Nathan liked his blend. Nathan wanted a a, a very uh a Virginia and he loved lemon leaf and he says, Is there any way you can get more lemon on it? Eh. Lemon bitters. That'll work. That'll get you to where you want to go. So hmm. there you go. So hopefully those blends are both gonna work for those guys. So we'll see. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that, that list is got how many how many blends are on the list now? Um actually on the blend list it's a hundred and seventy, but I have a hundred and eighty six um that are you know, there's fourteen that I just haven't I haven't updated put on the list yet. So when Andy 
hears about our, our mutual friend Andy and Valdusta hears about Tennessee winter. I'm, you know, when this comes out, oh, send me a jar of it. Okay. Off we go. He likes burly stuff. Yeah. So. Right. Right. Okay. But yeah, good. there we go. Good stuff. And then once I get back from Houston, I got to start packing for real. You know, I've been dicking around and putting stuff I don't use much away, and then I'm going to have to be serious about it because we got to be out of here end of July. So. Oh, wow. That's coming up fast. Yeah, yeah it is. So. Wow. Uh, all right. You know, and all the fun that that entails. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'll be out of uh, Colorado. Co- Colorado. Good for you. Yeah. Not my favorite place. Sorry, Colorado. It's not the, you know, just, no. Ain't for everybody. No, no. So I won't start any drama because there's enough of that going on. I I won't slander Colorado horrifically. Not until I leave anyway. Personal preference. That's right. Just, you know, boil it down to personal preference. That's right. First Amendment, kids. Just remember, say what you want, say what you, you mean. You don't eat, you don't, you don't like broccoli. You don't like Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I like best about my vegetables? They're easy to push out of way when I'm reaching for my steak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. We will be back next week. Episode 46. Um, yeah, and congratulations to Chad Brinkman. Well done, sir. Yeah, you thanks, won Chad. yourself. You you did Good an stuff. excellent job. Brandon, you know, excellent. Uh, yeah, everybody Ellen. did. Yeah, just some fun stuff. Thank you all for yeah. participating in our contest. Oh, and Mitchell is sending, uh, they're on their way. We have, uh, I think, three more pipes for giveaways. So maybe we'll have wow. a big contest and thanks, do Mitchell. Uh, Yeah, Mitchell and Sarah. Yeah, just got to love them. Good so, people. Yeah. Oh, and Mitchell found me a Dr. Graybo church warden. I didn't even know Graybo oh, really? made church wardens. So yeah, I'm kind either. of excited to see that one. So, And we'll be seeing them in Columbus coming up here soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, not soon. Two months. Yeah. All right. Well, have a wonderful evening, my friend. Yeah, you too. Good seeing you. Good to see you. We'll talk to you all later. All right.